So I was checking the CDC website as one does, and I saw that they finally updated the nowcast estimates. So after 10 weeks or just over two and a quarter months of not updating it, they finally updated it and they backfilled some data. The last update was 621 the week of that, but now they're doing monthly uh, groupings of everything which makes me believe that we're going to be moving to a monthly frequency updating of this. But again, since it took like just over two months, like two and a quarter months to actually get this together, um, it makes me skeptical that we're going to have this monthly reporting frequency. My other qualm with how they're now doing this is that they're grouping everything into very high level lineages. For instance, during that last late June update, these are all the variants that are listed. It's listing everything that's circulating essentially so that we can rapidly see new variants that are popping up and that are rising to levels of significance. But instead of showing all of the granular data, they're just grouping it into high-level categories, which is problematic. So for instance, XFG actually has two subvariants of it that are making up a very high percentage of all variants in circulation right now. If we go over to Raj's COVID variant tracker for the US, we see that XFG is about 23.5%, XFG.3 is 23.3, and XFG.2 is about 18% by all uh, lineages sequenced in circulation in the US. Now, it's important to note that not everything that reports to the CDC also is covered by Raj's tracker, but his tracker does have a lot of the major ones, and it is also typically very representative of what we're seeing in the population. And by grouping XFG.3 and XFG.2 into XFG and calling that a 78%, uh, it's neglecting the fact that we have subvariants that are now dominating as well. And we saw the same exact issue with LP8.1 when the CDC started doing that several months back, back in like February, where they were grouping LP8.1.1 into LP8.1 when that was already heading out in April and LP8.1.1 was dominating the lineages which means that this data is less accurate now, it's less representative of what's actually happening. So not only do we have a slower reporting frequency, meaning we're not able to see what's actually emerging in terms of COVID lineages, COVID variants. These high level categories are hiding what's actually happening where we have in this bar, XFG.2 making up like that much, XFG.3 making up that much, and then XFG making up that much which means that the CDC is breaking their own criteria, that they put the pango lineages of variants that exceed 1% of all sequenced, because technically already XFG should have XFG.2 and XFG.3 branching off of it. And similarly, LP8.1 doesn't have LP8.1.1, which was dominating for several months as the highest proportion variant of all sequenced meaning that our pango lineages are becoming less representative of what the actual scenario is over time. Where the downside to all of this is that we're going to have less well-matched vaccines in the future because they're not going to be picking emerging variants. They haven't been doing that anyways. They've been picking the trunk of the tree, and now they're going to be having basically like the tips of the tree as opposed to the trunk of the tree when they're using data from the CDC now. And not only did we get a CDC Nowcast update, we also got a source of COVID variant data update. So the dark blue is CDC provided data, the PHL is the public health laboratories. And if we look all the way over here and we zoom in, we see that the CDC is not contributing to any COVID variant monitoring right now. It's all public health labs. And due to a lot of loss of funding in May, um, among other things, uh, like firings and other such issues, we now only have about 245 sequences coming in a week as of July 26th.